Welcome to Bella in Your Business. I'm your host, Bella Vassa with Jump Consulting, and today I'm here with the Heather Dobson. Heather says that her mission in life is to help people lose their J-O-B and find their J-O-Y. She has a passion for digital trends and innovating, along with a deep understanding of social networks, consumers, and branding. So listen up today, okay? She also is the community builder at GoDaddy. She leverages her skills as a connector and her drive to help small businesses succeed. Heather, blah, blah. I am so excited for you to be here today. (laughs) I am so excited too. Thank you so much for for having me. I mean, uh, you and I have been friends and connected for quite some time and I'm really honored to be a guest on your show. For sure. It goes back to everyone listening. She has this amazing Malinois called Joker or named Joker. And this dog is so smart, but Heather is one of the best pet owners I know out there because she understands what it takes to have that kind of breed. And um, she so awesomely uh, joined me for another interview a while back about um, Joker. And so I just, I couldn't wait to have you on the show again, just to talk about business now. Um, Yeah. Thank you so much. And I just want to tell you that that video that we did with Joker is a PSA about owning a Belgian Malinois. Like that video has been seen so often um, and people have actually reached out to me and I've become friends with them. Other Malinois owners, uh, based on that video. So thank you. I love it. That's a good story of what some good yeah. SEO and titles yeah, can do for that's you. That's right. So today we're going to talk about identifying and overcoming challenges as a small business owner. Now, I know if I asked any of our listeners right now to think about a challenge that they have, they'd probably say, which one? So, <laughs> so Heather, your role um, at GoDaddy is a community builder. What exactly does that mean? <laughs> yeah, it's a weird title, right? Mm-hmm. And we had to we had to come up with something. So I work on the communications team, uh, and specifically the social media team, where I work in evangelism and advocacy. So my role really is identifying um, external influencers, so people outside of the GoDaddy brand who impact the buying decisions of small business owners, freelancers, entrepreneurs, all of those kinds of things, and actually building relationships with them and identifying how we might be able to help their community. And not by just products and services, but but what do we have in our own ecosystem that, that might be able to help. And I got here because um, I got to be really good at understanding that we need to do more than network. We actually need to build our community and developing meaningful relationships is a really important component of building your community. So I don't even use the word network or networking anymore. It's all about how I'm going to, how I'm going to build my own community. And the, the funny thing is, is that I was considered an influencer by GoDaddy. I was in their influencer ecosystem and, uh, not quite a year ago, uh, they approached me about a position and coming to work uh, at GoDaddy full time. And so I've been here about seven months and I am loving what I'm doing. And just so yeah. our listeners totally understand this. So Heather built such great relationships online as her own personal brand that a national brand like GoDaddy sought her out, said, Hey girl, we want to hire you just for your influence. <laughs> you can create your own position. So this whole community, uh, 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 community builder. Thank you. Community yeah. builder yeah. is is your title that you gave yeah. yourself. I mean, that's, that's exactly who it. Who gets to do that? So. I know. <laughs> so and, and 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 for me, when I talk so much about lose your job and find your joy, it's not just about launching your own business or becoming an entrepreneur. Right. It's about finding what speaks to you and what yeah. what fills you with with joy. And I do a whole bunch of other things, but in this case, the work that I'm doing as a job is really my J-O-Y. I love it because, awesome. you know, there's the whole cliche, if you never, um, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And it's just, it complements yeah, so well. Absolutely. And, and I'm just in a really cool spot that I have an amazing team. I work in an amazing team at a, at a, at a pretty cool little company, you know. <laughs> With a really cool boss. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. My boss is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. So, so, as you're building these relationships with people, what are some of the challenges that you see small businesses and freelancers have and and are they is there a common thread there? Yeah, absolutely. So I've worked uh, specifically with small businesses, freelancers and entrepreneurs for about the past 10 years of of my life and I see some some 
definite common threads. One is there's never enough time to do everything because uh, the, the owner is having to fill many positions and, and fill many, many roles, do accomplish many things. Yeah. Uh, the other is the, the business owner or the person wants to only work on their thing whatever their thing is. So I only want to take care of pets because that's what makes me happy. But they forget that there's all these other things that, that need to be accomplished uh, from, a, from the perspective of strategic planning, your marketing, all of those kinds of things. Um, and then probably one of the, the biggest things that, that I see is fear. Like there's a lot of fear in moving beyond uh, the norm. Just the, yeah, moving beyond the norm and and pushing those boundaries of uh, people are saying I can't do this or I shouldn't do this or I'm crazy to do this and just stepping through that fear. Fear is never just going to go away completely, but stepping through that fear is something that I see hold a lot of people back and it, it actually can be so detrimental to a small business or to freelancers. And so I want people to overcome those fears. Yeah. I'm reminded of a recent post that you just did about sitting down and having a talk with a voice in your head. And that yep. voice could also be fear. Um, can you tell, you, you, you could better explain it than I can. Can you yeah, tell sure. that story about having a, a conversation with the fear and acknowledging it that it's yeah. in your life? Exactly. So I live my life very transparently and um, authentic. I don't have any secrets to hide. And how how I am in person is how I am at work, is how I am where, wherever I am. Like to, to know me is to know me 100% of the time. And so I often share these stories of my own struggles, especially on social media, because we see all the success and all the glittery stuff and all the good stuff because people want you to think that their life is perfect. When in, when in reality, people are struggling. What Whatever it is. For me, it's been um, depression and anxiety uh, and, and definitely fear in my life. Um, and for a lot of people, it's it's just overcoming this fear. So so in this the story that I wrote, I talked about. It was uh, brilliant. This, oh, thank you. I, so I wonder if I can actually include a link to it. I mean, it was. Yeah. It, you, it wasn't it, just like a great story, but it was authentic. <laughs> and it was so the way that you just constructed it was just yeah. like. Wow. It, I <laughs> mean, really, so I was so impressed. Well, what I did is I, I had struck, I have struggled with uh, depression and anxiety for, for more than 20 years. And, and it's just this, been this constant battle. And the way I always viewed it is this monster that lived in my head. Like this monster just took up residence in my head. He totally squatted in there. I didn't invite him in. I don't know how he got there. Um, and for years, I've been fighting him. Um, and, and a lot of times, he makes a lot of noise, like he's throwing ragers. And those ragers then affect me and affect my work and affect my life. And uh, I, I had just spent all this time battling and fighting. And, and to be honest, I was just tired. I was just tired of it and nothing I was doing was actually working, whether it was uh, therapy, medication, wh whatever it was, was just wasn't working. So I made this decision one day, okay, if what I'm doing is not working, I've got to do something else. And maybe what this monster needs is to be acknowledged and to be loved. And so I literally brewed a cup of tea I sat down and I called that little monster out and he and I had a conversation. And I mean, literally, like I talked out loud. There was nobody else but me and the dog there <laughs> and having tea with, with this, this monster. And I see that, like just acknowledge that the fear is there. Okay. Nobody is fearless. Okay. You don't need to be fearless. You need to be dauntless and dauntless is acting in spite of fear. And so if you just acknowledge it, have a conversation with it, whatever it is. If it's your fear, your depression, your anxiety, whatever, just acknowledge it. Have have the conversation and then move past it. You're not going to do it in one day, but it's totally, completely doable. I'm blown away and I got chills oh. when you said don't this. No, for <laughs> yeah. real. I mean, I yeah. just think it's so great. It's so great. So, um, yeah. Yeah. What are some of the biggest opportunities you see people overlook when it comes to driving awareness and revenue? And I would assume that this is 
a pretty good parlay to what we were just talking about. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, so okay, let's let's work through our fear. Let's work through all that. And by the way, if we have real people in our lives, the ones that I call dream killers, uh, it can be our significant others, our parents, somebody around us saying, you can't do that. Yeah. This is what you say to them. I'll give you a little script to give to them. Okay, and this was given to me by someone else. That is, I accept your love for me. I reject your fear. Okay. Don't let their fear become your fear. Um, That's so and, good. Say that again. Say that again. So, so it is. I accept your love for me. I reject your fear. Amen, okay? sister. And then just move past it. Th be thankful that they, that they love you enough to be concerned about you, but don't let their fear become your fear. Um, there are so many opportunities that I see businesses overlook simply because they're short on time or they're so focused on working in their business. They're work, working on execution and, and production that they're not taking a step back. And so the number one biggest opportunity is for people to stop, step back, and look at their business like a business and actually develop a strategic plan of success. So it's not just, okay, I want to make my own line of bubble gum because I love bubble gum and that's all I want to do, right? I'm looking at my gum on my desk right now. So. <laughs> but it is, okay, define your goals and yeah. your goals are your goals. You have your own definition of success and you shouldn't compare it to anybody else's. So if it is, I want to make $250 a month because I want to stash that away to buy a new car eventually or whatever it is, have the goal. Okay. So if your goal is $250 a month, then work backwards from there and start thinking about what are the steps that you need to take to make however many dollars that is per day. Okay. I don't have my calculator in front of me. So $250 a month divided by 30. Okay. What do I need to do to make or to save? This works for savings too. Okay. What do I need to make or save per day at the end of the month to have $250 in savings? That small little thing sets you on a path to success. Yes. If you don't have plans for, for everything that you're doing, you don't know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, how do you know when you've achieved a certain level and you can and move, move beyond that? It's like um, Alice, uh, Alice in Wonderland. Do you know that quote? It says like <laughs> she comes upon the chest star or the, the cat and he says, um, which way are you going? And she goes, well, I don't really know. And he goes, well, then it doesn't matter if you go left or right, you know, it's yeah, so true. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you're going. And so that, that really, truly, especially for, for those of us who are, maybe we've got a full-time job and we're starting something on the side, our side yeah. hustle, um, because we want to leave our full-time job or because we want to do this on the side and we love this. Um, and we're not, building this because we're going to make a hundred million dollars. It's because mm -hmm. we love it. It's because it's, it's creating freedom. Of, yeah. It's our mm -hmm. J-O-Y. It's creating freedom and flexibility in our lives. But if you don't have that goal, you're, you're never going to get there. And that's the, that's the number one thing that, that I see people overlook. Right. The, the, the next thing is really how they are building both their online and offline presence or their brand. Okay. And I'm big, you know, this, that I'm big on personal branding. Yeah. Okay. You no one are, can take that from you. That's right. You are your personal brand, whether you are an employee, whether you're an entrepreneur, small business owner, freelancer, you are your brand. I'm so big into building this personal brand. And I can tell you that I am a, I am a model of my own success because I built a personal brand and that's, what has gotten me to where I am today right. and will continue. Um, they hired me because of my personal brand. And in order to have this position, I have to continue to build my personal brand. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm very passionate, crazy about that. And I, I, I see people shy away from, um, turning themselves into a, a brand. And I'm not asking you to create two personalities. I want you to be authentic. I want you to be real. And I want you to understand that the days of keeping business completely separate from your personal life are gone, <laughs> essentially, especially um, in an, an online place. And I don't want that to scare people. Yeah. There's definitely ways to, to manage that. So 
um, setting, setting your goals and strategic planning and developing a personal brand. Those are two things that jump out at me right away. And then of course there's more tactical things that I see, especially in building websites, um, and building a social media presence. There are so many tools out there that we can use both for websites and for social media. Um, but people kind of get analysis, uh, paralysis by analysis, right? Yes. There's so many things. What should I do? Where should I start? Here's the secret. Okay. It's a big secret. Just start, <laughs> just start. And I know that you tell yes. your people this, I know you tell this, but we've got to keep reiterating it to people. I have to tell it to myself and other people have to tell me like, just start, just do it. Start somewhere. And when it comes to social media, um, those of us who don't work in the industry, I happen to work in social media, um, but I'm surrounded by people who don't build websites and who don't have, who, who, who this is not normal for them, right? It's not their world. Yeah. It's not their world. Um, but they're hearing these messages of, I need to be everywhere. I need a Facebook page. I need Instagram. I need Snapchat. I got to be on LinkedIn. I got to do all these things. And I am calling BS on that right now. <laughs> not only do you not need to, you can't. You, there's no way for you as a small business owner to scale that. And so my famous phrase is get really good at one instead of sucking at all of them. Preach it, girl. Preach yeah. it. It's so yeah. it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. Um, I love what you're saying. Everything that you're saying, I'm totally buying. Yeah. <laughs> When's yeah. your book coming out? Yeah. Um, I just love it. So, Heather, um, you are just dropping um, truth bombs, as, as one person would say, um, <laughs> all over the place. So tell us now, how do we actually execute this stuff? What? How do we decide... Um, what things we're going to actually do and what we're going to outsource. Yeah. So there's a time for most small business owners, especially freelancers, that you, you're doing everything, right? Because that's just okay. the way it is from a financial perspective or maybe I don't know who the people are um, who I need help from. Maybe I don't even know yet what I need help with. Um, and so, so first off... You want to start identifying what is your habu. This is what I, this is the phrase I use, your habu, your highest and best use. Okay? okay. Once you've identified what your highest and best use is, that is where you're getting the maximum amount of return for the time that you're investing in something. So I know at home in my life, my highest and best use is doing things that one are either generating revenue because somebody's going to pay my bills <laughs> or two are, are bringing me joy. And so I break it down into, okay, if I'm going to clean the house today, it's going to take me X number of hours to clean the house today. So, um, is that time better spent cleaning the house? Is it better spent doing something that's generating revenue or is it better spent doing something that's bringing me joy? And so it's probably not going to bring me joy and it's definitely not generating revenue. So that's something I'm probably going to outsource. Okay. If I'm, if I'm able to do that. And, and this is the way you got to start looking at things yeah. is, okay, what, what is going to bring me the revenue? What is going to bring me the joy and the things that you don't like to do or not going to generate direct revenue, then you need to delegate those. Okay. Um, even before that, you can take a step back and get rid of the stuff that you don't even need to do. So it's a delete, delegate, and do system. Those are the three things. I look at everything in my life that way. Okay, first of all, nope, not even, it doesn't apply. <laughs> I'm deleting it. It's done. I'm done with it. Get out. Yeah. Um, delegate. Okay, this is something I know that needs to be done. It's going to take me 10 times longer to do it than it would take this person because this person knows exactly what they're doing. Yeah. And so it makes more sense to delegate it. And then what's left is my do. This is my do pile. And these are the things that, that I have to get done. I love that. Yeah. I mean, we are, we're always going to procrastinate the stuff that we don't want to do anyways. Yep. So why not? Um, it's funny that you talked about house cleaner because my house cleaner just came today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's, that's the thing. That's like you really, and, and there are people who enjoy cleaning their houses and God bless you. Um, but that's not something that, that I want to spend my time on. Yeah, yeah. for sure. 
So yeah. if we're, we have a lot of pet sitters who are just starting out um, with the explosion of different apps like Dog Vacay and Rover. We've got a lot of people that are kind of teeter tottering. They still have a full time day job, but they're really intrigued by our industry. Um, and so what would you say to someone who um, is being held back for some reason like like that? Like, what, what would you tell them? Yeah. Other than shit so, out of a pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Execute. Um, so, so there's a couple of things like identify what's, what's holding you back and, and really get true with yourself and tell yourself if, if it's bullshit, call bullshit on yourself, right? Um, stop coming up with all these excuses. You call them reasons. I call them excuses. You, you listener, I know you don't Bella, but, <laughs> but identify what, what truly is it um, that is holding you back? And I will tell you, okay, so we talked about fear. We can, we can move past that. There also is what I see holding some people back from either creating something on the side or leaving this workforce and, and, and creating something on the side is this, this expectation, these societal norms, right? These perceived societal norms that, well, this isn't what people do. People don't quit their jobs and start a pet sitting business or start, you know, sign up as a contractor with Rover.com and let dogs take over the house, which I think is awesome, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> And so you've got to move past those societal norms and just know that there's a place for your passion out there. And I talk often about somebody here in Phoenix has a mobile bird grooming business. I see their car yep. and it's all marked up mobile bird grooming. And I love it every time I see that car because I think that is a person who is pursuing their passion. That is their J-O-Y yep. is to have this mobile bird grooming business. And I use that as, as an example of – Whatever you love or whatever you want to do or whatever you're good at, there is a market for it out there. Um, and, and also there's this perception, if you leave a job, whether it's because you get fired or because you quit or because there were layoffs with the budget cuts or all that kind of stuff, there's this perception that, okay, I'm a failure. No, okay, I'm calling bullshit on that right now. <laughs> um, yeah, you've got to move past this and you got to think about instead of, your job is your identity. Your life is your identity. And look yes. at things like um, one of my favorite people, Pam Slim, calls your body of work. Okay, so what you're doing in your day job as a full-time employee doesn't is not comprehensive of who you are as a person. And so you want to start something on the side. You want to generate some more income. You want to have furry critters or pokey critters around. I have a pet hedgehog too. <laughs> Sometimes needs a pet sitter. <laughs> you want to have these creatures around you um, because that's what's bringing joy in your life. Then move past the societal norms and the expectations that have been created for you and create your own expectations. It's just such an interesting concept because it is so far against the norm. And I think that as, as you are a community builder, community leader, and are very tapped into um, not just trends, but like what works, um, taking the concept of separating life and business, not having that transparency or authenticity, and also creating and standing strong in your own brand, it's so against what we're told, you know, like in your business, you don't want to be the only pet sitter that people get involved with, but it's just such a fine dance because we're not saying this is, or how, I don't think you're saying, um, you know, be the only pet sitter. You're saying create the brand around you. Like it's the brand is you can trust Heather or Susie because yeah. she's made some good decisions for you on sending Susie's helpers out there, you know, right. or Am I on the right track? Yeah. Because I'm you trying absolutely. to relate yeah. this in a way that for so many times we kind of hammer into people, you need to step away from your business. Your business is, is not valuable if you're the only face of the company. So yeah. I'm trying to like transform this for some of our listeners who are thinking, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you uh, are creating uh, this, this whole 
this whole body, the body of work. I just, and, and I, that's a hundred percent attributed to Pam Slim. Um, but I can't find anything else better to describe it. It's not just this one thing that you're doing. It's yeah. everything that you're doing, like living your life in an authentic way. Right. And, on and uh, offline. And that's yes, what you were on saying. and offline. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And becoming a resource for people, like yeah. sharing, sharing information and solving problems instead of always selling, like you're becoming a resource for people. Um, and there's some, there's some differences here about whether you're building a pet sitting business or you are working as an independent contractor with things like Fido and Rover and, and, and those types of things. Like these are, those are two different worlds here, but you definitely, if you're on the side where you're building a pet sitting business and you're branding that Susie's helpers, then you can't be 100% the only person there that people know and trust. Right. You've got to create this army of people who are extensions of you. Right. And the only way you can do that is by bringing in people who have the same love and passion that you do. Um, and the best way to attract those people is to live authentically and find, and, and the universe will bring those people to you. It sounds so, I'm not a hippie. No, like guys. attracts really like, not. it's true. It's true. <laughs> I mean, yeah. look at the people around you. That That's who you are as a person. So Heather, I know that we're kind of wrapping up here on the time. Tell me about something you're doing that's really exciting. Yeah, so I've been really fortunate to start this cool thing over at GoDaddy where I'm hosting a weekly live show. We broadcast live on Facebook every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, 2 p.m. Central. The show is called Beyond the Domain. Um, we don't talk about GoDaddy products or services at all. What I'm doing really is all these people in my, my uh, community, I'm bringing them on as guests on the show, and we're talking about solving problems in your small business. Um, we're talking about defining your audience. We're ta we did have Pam Slim as a guest and talking about uh, leaving jobs and, and, and finding our joy. We've talked about uh, analytics, marketing analytics, like why you need to have some analytics tied to your website to show whether or not stuff is performing. Uh, believe it or not, our most viewed episode so far was with an attorney. And the attorney was talking about, hey, you know, we're not going to just pull images off of Google Images and use on our websites and our blogs because you can get in a lot of trouble for that. Um, but it's just this really cool show where we're just hanging out and talking just a lot like this. We're, we're having conversations um, and and we're iterating on that. So we're, we're still building it out. But we've done uh, I just wrapped up the uh, episode number nine. And I'm having a blast with that. So every Thursday, 11 a.m. on the GoDaddy Facebook page. I love that, and I highly recommend everyone checks it out because, actually, Heather, I don't know if you know, but that lawyer you are just talking about, yeah. she was in a couple episodes prior to this episode, so uh, if you just check out Bella in your business, I saw her on there and yeah. said, oh my gosh, this is such a topic that nobody ever talks about. So yep. if you're listening to Bella in your business right now, go ahead and back to the iTunes or Stitcher and look back a couple episodes, and you'll see... Um, uh, Sarah's Sarah, name. Yep. Sarah yeah. Hawkins is her name. Yeah, she, she is up. a wealth of knowledge, and I love hearing that. It was yeah. your most popular show so, so far. So far, so far, it's gotten the most views. Yeah, yeah so I just love go that. go to the GoDaddy page, you guys. If you're just looking to like listen while you work, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, you could put that on in the background and and yeah. and listen oh. up. And Heather, how can anyone get a hold of you if they just want to find their J O Y or just get yeah. connected to you or? Soak yeah. up your rays. <laughs> yeah, so you can, I'm pretty easy to find. Um, my uh, name is D-O-P as in Paul. That's a, uh, a big uh, spelling mistake on my parents' part or something. <laughs> uh, but you can find me on Twitter. I'm, I'm super active on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. Um, my Facebook page is uh, uh, slash the Heather Dobson uh, or my own personal page you can, or profile. You can follow me there too. It's H Dobson. Um, and I think Bella, you're, you're more than welcome to, to share that link out of that uh, post that I wrote. And you can also find me on LinkedIn. Uh, and then I have a website. It's uh, revamping right now, but it'll, it'll be up soon. So heatherdobson.com. Awesome. Heather, thank you so much for your time here on Bella in Your Business. You guys remember to like and subscribe and comment. And if there's any topic that you want to hear about, go ahead and let me know. And I'd be happy to make that happen. Um, again, thanks so much for joining us. This is another episode of Bella in Your Business. Always keep jumping.